Kentucky. I am coming up on four years clean. Uh, my road in recovery has been a fantastic dream of mine. I'm currently a coordinator at Hope Haven in Franklin, Kentucky. I run a treatment center. Um, God has surely blessed me in my road of recovery today. Well, thank you so much for coming out here, taking the time this morning to share your story with us. Um, so we'll just get started just from the beginning. So can you tell me about your childhood, what it was like, did you experience any trauma, that kind of thing? In my childhood, um, both of my parents was incarcerated, so I grew up visiting the penitentiary most of my life off and on. I visited one parent on Saturday and one parent on Sunday. So um, a criminal mindset was in store in me at a very young age. Um, I would like to say that it uh, the trauma from that drifted me in a different path in life, but um, as I'm currently sitting here with you today with you guys, it did not. Um, I chose my own road when I turned of age, and it was not a good road. Wow. Um, that That's tough, though. That Absolutely. That's very tough. Did you have siblings? I do have a sibling. Um, I have a little brother, and I have an older sister. Okay. My older sister committed suicide when she was 19 years old. Oh, I'm sorry I was to hear nine. That. Um, so that kind of started a deeply rooted abandonment issues, trust issues, and a lot of no self-worth and not feeling loved. So who did you live with? I lived with my grandparents. Okay. So how old were you when you first started experimenting with drugs or alcohol? Um, I was around the age of 14 okay. when I started uh, smoking marijuana, drinking alcohol, um, dabbling into cocaine and methamphetamines. So the first time, do you remember how it made you feel? Like I didn't have a care in the world and I was hooked immediately. Wow. Uh, and high school, did you graduate? I actually went on home school in my 10th grade year okay. and um, I got my high school diploma within six months. So were your parents incarcerated your entire childhood then? My father was. Okay. And your mother got out when? When I was around the age of 12. So. What was your relationship like with her? Um, it was rocky when I was younger. Uh, we butted heads quite a bit, as you know, as most teenage mothers and their daughters do. For sure. Um, but once my mama got out and changed her lifestyle around, the mother that I have today has been a big inspiration and a role model in my life today. Oh, that's a good ending, for sure. Um, all right, so... Can you sh share a couple of stories that really illustrate what life was like in your active addiction? Life in my active addiction was pure hell. Um, I didn't have any regrets, any remorse. Um, I was scared of everything that, you know, now I realize that I was scared of everything. Like, you know, fears and resentments and harms to others was very real to me in active addiction. I didn't care about nobody or anybody that I hurt besides myself. Mm -hmm. I currently have two daughters that has been on this road with me. Um, one now is 18 and one is now 12. Um, what I've done to them would be my only regret. Yeah. Sometimes the, the kids suffer the worst and Absolutely, they do. My oldest daughter, she's 18. We all know how, once again, yeah. <laughs> being a teenager, you know, she has a lot of resentments towards me as well as my 12-year-old daughter. Um, but our relationship is so much better. They, they currently have a wonderful mother in recovery that, you know, applies the AA principles and the steps to all my life situations. Um, my oldest daughter is probably the one who struggles the most because she's like, Mom, everything's not about AA. And I'm like, but it is for me, sweetheart. Um, it so has to be sometimes. It absolutely yeah. has to be. There's not a single step or tradition in the AA program of Alcoholic Anonymous that I can't apply to my everyday life, even raising my children. Right. So I'll back up a little bit. Um, when you were in your addiction, do you remember when it became, like it consumed your life, when your life became unmanageable, um, that kind of thing, when it was just an everyday occurrence and you couldn't get out of it? That started probably in my 20s, but my rock bottom started in my 30s um, when I busted in her front door with a, with a pistol and shot around off a balcony, and I knew then that I could have killed somebody, right. that I knew then I needed help. 
so it wasn't a problem for me to stand up in the courts and say, hey, I have a methamphetamines problem and I need help. Um, that whole situation landed me in the penitentiary. Um, that was also the first time that they threw out treatment to me. Uh, my first treatment center was Teen Challenge in Chattanooga, Tennessee, four and a half hours away from home. Um, it took me a long time to get that program. I would also, I'm also a Teen Challenge alumni, but I'm also a Teen Challenge flunky. I, I relapsed before I ever even graduated that program. How I made it through it, I never know. Um, the last time that I went out, though, I ran off and left my children in my home and everything, and I was on a suicide mission. I never planned on coming back to make things right. And God had something else in store for me. Um, he brought me back, and I went to another treatment center, Grace Recovery Home, in Russellville, Kentucky, and I'm an alumni there, and it forever changed my life. I've never looked back. So, when ex exactly is your sobriety date? My sobriety date is 10-30 of 2017. Okay. So you have almost four years. Almost four years clean. Congratulations. So Thank let's you. talk about life today then. So first, how do you maintain your sobriety? Life today, I go to meetings still. I have a sponsor. I still actively work my program of recovery. Um, and I've been with Hope Haven two years this week. Um, I can't keep what I have if I'm not willing to give it back. You know, and the first time I shared my story, it was spoke over me that I was going to touch thousands and thousands of people's lives. I didn't quite know what that looked like until I walked through the doors at Hope Haven. I started out there as an RA, and I wasn't an RA very long until I went to Louisville and become APSS certified, adult peer support specialist. And from there, I've become the head coordinator at Hope Haven. Wow. Um, it is my life. It is my goal in life to help people get out of the life of hell and misery and into a life of freedom. That's amazing. So it was kind of just this journey that you didn't really know that you had and it kind of just like happened like that. If you would have told me 10 years ago I was going to work in recovery, I would have laughed in your face. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> it was not, it was not a vision that I planned for myself. Right, right, right. So you talked a little bit about this, but your relationships today, um, with your, your daughter, it seems, you know, like as any teenage daughter, yeah, there's definitely, definitely issues, but, um, but are they healthier now? Both of my daughters are very much healthier. My 18-year-old daughter says that I'm an inspiration in her life today, Aww. that there's no trial or tribulation that she hasn't seen her mother walk through today. I'm definitely a woman of integrity in her eyes. Um, my youngest daughter is a straight-A student. Um, she has goals in life. She wants to go off and go to college and help people like her mama. Um, I'm not sure that she's wanting to lean into the recovery field, but she knows she wants to help people, and they both have a heart of gold. Aww. And your mom, she says she's a, she's a big instrument My in life mom now. is an inspiration to me today. I've watched her raise me. I've watched her walk out of a life of hell herself and right. completely turn her life around. She's not currently active in a program, but she, you know, she was one, you know, as Alcoholic Anonymous Big Book teaches us, she was one person to turn her life over on her own like she decided I'm done and she was done Wow! so the That's strong her. will and the strong mind definitely comes from my mother <laughs> for sure <laughs> for sure so what dreams have come true for you and what hopes do you have for the future what dreams has come true for me is running a rehab center maintaining my sobriety my relationship with God is phenomenal um, being a mother to my children um, making amends to my family through my actions. You know, my actions speak so much louder than my words today. Um, going through trials and tribulations and coming outside with, you know, outside of them without having to drink or use is just phenomenal. You know, reaching out to a support group whenever possible. There is not a dream or a goal that I have set since day one that I have not achieved in the last four years. Wow, that's impressive and amazing. So can you describe a certain feeling that you've received in sobriety that was not there in addiction? The love that I have for life today. Okay. The love and compassion that I have for people today. Yeah. Um, 
there is nothing in this world that anybody can done, has done or could do that I could not look at them dead in their face and say, you have been forgiven. There's another way. Let me help you. Mm-hmm. And what have you learned from your addiction? I have learned from my addiction that everybody has to hit their rock bottom and be willing to say, hey, I have a problem and I need help. Right. And that's where the foundation of our recovery starts. Right. Exactly. So, do you have any words of hope that you would like to share with somebody trying to get sober? No matter how hard or how difficult that this pathway may seem, it is always worth it. Um, Every day is not a bed of roses, but it's a heck of a lot better than it was to one day out there in hell that we lived in an addiction. It's beautiful, beautifully said. Is there anything else that you wanted to talk about that we didn't cover so much, or did we pretty much get everything? I have nothing if you don't have anything else. (laughs) Well, I do have something. I just want to thank you so much again for coming out and supporting On the Road of Recovery. Your story is beautiful and crazy and wild, but it's it's your story, and it's going to help so many people, so we really, really appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you.